Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part two of ranking positions by division or division by positions. Either way works. Anyway, today, what we're going to do, we did the AFC yesterday. What we're going to do, the NFC today. We got four different divisions to go over. A little bit quicker this time since we've already gotten it done. We'll do it and then talk about a little bit of them. That's the way we're going to do it in today's video. We have a ton of EA College football updates to go over, which we will go over in tomorrow's video. We're going to break it all down. Gaming Insider, what they've said, and some stuff about a premiere of the game as well for what they're saying is coming in July as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead, hop in to this NFL ranking by divisions. Celtics with the win in overtime last night was a great game. Jason Tatum with that amazing shot at the end of the game to win that game for the Boston Celtics. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in to our NFL rankings divisions by positions. Here we are with our official position group right here. Quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, defense, and then head coach as well. We're doing the NFC South first. Let's go ahead and start off with quarterback. So for quarterback, I am going to go Kirko. Then I'm going to go Baker Mayfield here. I'm going to go, obviously, Bryce Young and then Derek Carr. Either of the two can be flip-flopped, but I just think Bryce Young is going to eventually be better than Derek Carr at this point. And he's already shown signs of that as well. Kirk, obviously, is going to be the best one in this division. Baker's kind of close up there as well. Either two, you can flip-flop on that one. Running back-wise, I'm going to go with Bijan on this one. Then I'm going to go with Alvin Kamara on this one. Give me just a second. I'm going to go Alvin Kamara here. Then I'm going to go whoever Tampa's is. I think it's Leonard Fournette. And then um, I guess we can go Chuba Hubbard as well. That's kind of where I'm at for that one. For running backs, kind of self-explanatory. Wide receiver core. This one's going to be interesting. I'm going to go Bucks here. Then I'm going to go Falcons. Then I'm going to go Panthers. Then I'm going to be going Saints here. Once again, I just think with the Saints over the Panthers, I just think that with the absence of Michael Thomas and a couple of those other guys, all they really have is Olave and versus Carolina, they do have some guys that can make plays. They got Jonathan Mingo. They got Adam Thielen. Obviously, Deontay Johnson is going to be a key role in that position group as well. So they're better than the Saints. Falcons, on the other hand, the Bucks obviously have the best in the division. So that's what we're going to go with there. Now, moving on to tight end, I'm going to go Falcons. I'm going to go Bucks here. I'm going to go Saints, and then I'm going to go Panthers. Really, I just don't really know who the Pan or who the Saints tight end is at this point in time. I guess, actually, I'm going to swap the Panthers and put them at two because I know who their tight end is, but I don't really know who the Bucks and the Saints is, so that's why I'm going with that one. Now, moving on defensively, this one's going to be interesting. I'm going to go Falcons. I'm going to go Panthers. I'm going to go Saints. Or I'm going to go Saints, and then I'm going to go Bucks. Bucks, I think, in this league, this, this division particularly, has one of the better defenses all around in it. But I think the Falcons' defense is really good. I think their pass rush is going to be really good. I like J.C. Horn on this Carolina Panthers team. They've got dogs on that team without Brian Burns. Obviously, with Jadavion Clowney being on that team as well. Signing a couple of them. And then Chase Young with the Saints, adding them to that roster. And Marshawn Lattimore with Cam Jordan is going to be one part part, part of a problem for these teams. And the Bucks. Really, I don't really have anybody other than Anton Winfield Jr. I don't really know who's on their team. Now, moving on. Two head coaches. This is where it's going to get interesting. I'm going to go my particular order. I'm going to go with the Falcons head coach. I'm going to go Panthers head coach, Dave Canales. Then I'm going to go Todd Bowles. And then I'm going to go Dennis Allen because Dennis Allen's a dumb, dumb head. And then Falcons, if it weren't Arthur Smith, I'd really like Raheem Moser, I believe is what his name is. But Panthers, Dave Canales is really young. I like the vibe he's given. But yeah, that is all for my... NFC South position by division by position rankings. Let's move on to the next one. All right, here we are with our second, obviously, our second division with the NFC West. This one's kind of be, going to be cut and simple for the most part. So, starting with quarterback, we're going to go Brock Purdy. Then, I'm actually going to go Matthew Stafford here. Then, I'll go Geno. And then, I'll go Kyler Murray. I think it's plain and simple on that one. Then we're going to go to running back. Of course, it's going to be the 49ers. Then it's going to be the Rams. Then it's going to be the Seahawks. And then it's going to be the Cardinals as well. Again, I just like the Seahawks running back. Kenneth Walker is a really good running back. But I do think the Rams have a better running back core altogether. And then, of course, the Niners. You're not touching Christian McCaffrey. And then the Cardinals have James Conner, of course. Now, moving on to wide receivers here. 
This one's going to get interesting. I'm going to go San Francisco. I'm going to go Seattle. Then I'm going to go L.A. Then I'm going to go Arizona. I think two and three can be flopped either way with Cooper Cup and obviously Puka Nakua. But with the Seahawks, you got DK. You got Tyler Lockett. You got JSN. That's a pretty good receiving duo or trio right there. And then the 49ers obviously having Brandon Ayuk and obviously um, Debo in there as well. So that's why they're number one. But that is the same thing for the most part for these first three. Now, let's go to tight end where I do have San Francisco. Then I will go Zach Ertz here. Then I'll go, or actually, I'll go Seahawks. And then I'll go Rams for this one as well. I like Zach Ertz. I think he's the second best tight end in this division by far. I think that 49ers, obviously, George Quiddo clears that. But that is it for that one. So let's move on to defense, which is going to be San Francisco. It's going to be Seattle. Then it's going to be L.A., and then it's going to be the Rams. I don't know why I keep doing that, but I think, again, Seattle's got definitely a really good defense within that squad. They can beat the other two with that defense alone, so that's why they're number one. But the 49ers, obviously, are the clear-cut number one for that one. And finally, moving on with head coach, and I'm going to go 49ers, obviously. Then I'm going to go Sean McVay. Then I'm going to go... Uh, Seahawks, whoever it is now, and then the Cardinals as well. So that is it for the NFC West. Literally, San Francisco 49ers are leading everything, and I think it's pretty self-explanatory as to why they're leading everything. Moving on to the NFC North, and then we'll finish up with the NFC East here. Quarterback, I am going to go with Jared Goff here. I do like Jared Goff. Then I'm going to go Jordan Love. Then I'm going to be going, woo, hold up. I'm going to go Mike McCarthy, or J.J. McCarthy, rather. Excuse me, I'm already thinking about Dallas. Then I'm going to go with Chicago and Caleb Williams. Again, I think J I like J.J. a lot better than Caleb Williams. I think Caleb Williams is overrated, if you're asking me. Didn't really do much within the college football landscape. J.J. McCarthy, on the other hand, winning a national championship is why I have him at number three. But both of those teams have rookies. Jordan Love, obviously, making it to the playoffs and beating the Dallas Cowboys. But Jared Goff did the same thing. And, of course, went further in the playoffs, so that's why I'm going with that one. Now, moving on to running back. I'm going to go Lions. I'm going to go Bears. Then I'm going to go Packers. And then I will go Minnesota Vikings on this one. And this one is pretty plain and simple with number one. Jameer Gibbs is a great running back to have. Obviously, the Bears have a great running back, DeAndre Swift, I believe, now as well. Josh Jacobs with the Packers, he's going to be really good. Just haven't seen him played yet. And then, of course, whoever the Vikings wide or running back is, is why they are in last place. But moving on to the receiving position, I'm going to go Lions here. This one's going to get iffy. I'm going to go Vikings, then I'm going to go Bears, and then I'm going to go Packers. Packers dead last is kind of obvious, right? They don't really have anybody. But the Bears, on the other hand, they got some playmakers. They got DJ Moore. They got Keenan Allen. They got Roma Duze, who's going to be a really solid receiver within this NFL next year. And then the Vikings, on the other hand, obviously Justin Jefferson, Addison's really good. And then the the, or the Lions, excuse me, naming every other team but this team, is obviously the number one clear cut with Amon State Brown and all those other guys. So that's why I'm going with that one. Now we're going to move to tight end, which is going to get a little bit different. So I'm starting off with the Lions. Yes, I know, right? Shocking. Then I'm going to go Packers. Then I'm going to go Bears. And then actually take that back. I'm going to go Vikings, Bear, Packers, Bears for this one as well. Lions, obviously, they have the number one tight end in the league, right? They got Sam Laporta, I believe, as well. Vikings, they do have a really good tight end as well. Packers, they're iffy with Christian Watson in that group. But the Bears, obviously... They're, they're dead last. Cole Komet, I don't understand what's wrong with him, but that is that one for tight end. That's the least information that I have on the tight end of this division right now. Now, moving on defensively, this is where I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to go Packers here, then I'm going to go Lions, then I'm going to go Vikings, actually, and then I'm going to go Bears. I think the Bears do have the dead last defense in this division. I think the Packers have the best defense in this division by far. The Lions can get there. It's just a matter of if they're going to get experienced enough to get division or to get that defense to where it needs to be, which is why the Packers are in first place in that one. Now, moving on to our final one, which, of course, is head coaching. Give me Dan Campbell. Then I'll go Matt LaFleur. Then I will go whoever the Vikings is and then whoever the Bears is as well. That is my rankings. This is the division where I have the least amount of knowledge from, so bear with me, guys. That is my rankings for the NFC North Division. All right, moving on to our last and final division here with the NFC East, 
We'll go quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, defense, and then head coach as per usual. Starting off with the quarterback position, I'm going to go with Dak Prescott here in the Dallas Cowboys. Then I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Eagles. Then I'll go Jaden. Then I will go New York. I think that's pretty plain and simple why I think Jalen Hurts likes to sell a lot in the playoffs. So does Dak Prescott, obviously. But I think regular season-wise, Dak is a little bit better than Jalen Hurts. I think that's where they thrive is the regular season for whatever reason. It's not the playoffs. And we'll see if Jaden Daniels can take that spot with the Washington Commanders. But moving on to the running back position, I'm going to go the Eagles here with Saquon Barkley. Then I'm going to go Washington here. Then I'm going to go New York. And then I'm going to go Dallas. That's just how I see it. I think the Cowboys have the worst running back in the league. I think New York is kind of almost there. And then I think Washington is a little bit better than New York. But I think Saquon is the top of the top. Now, moving on to the wide wide receiver position here. This one's going to get interesting because... I have the Dallas Cowboys going at the wide receiver position. Then I have the Philadelphia Eagles. Then Washington. And then New York. Actually, I have New York and then Washington. I think I do think Malik Neighbors is going to be better than, of course, Terry McLaurin there. I think the Eagles are a very close second to Dallas Cowboys with C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, and Jalen Tolbert as well. Those are going to be key factors in that new wide receiver group that we don't have anymore. So that's where I'm going with that one. Moving on to tight end where it will in fact get more interesting, but I do have Dallas taking that tight end spot with with obviously Jake Ferguson. He's the number one guy on that squad. He's the number one guy in the division. Then I'm gonna, gonna I think I'm gonna go Washington. Then I'm gonna go Philly and then I'm gonna go New York. I just think that's how that plays out. If not, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Moving on defensively, I'm going to go Eagles. This is where I'll switch it up. I'm going to go Dallas. Then I'm going to go Washington. And then I'm going to go New York here. I think New York is probably the worst team in this division by far. But I think Philly has a little bit better defense because of Jalen Carter, because of that pass rush, than the Dallas Cowboys do. I think with the losses of our corners that we have, but we also gained a couple players, it's going to be iffy this year to see. But I think that's the way it's going to work for that Dallas Cowboys squad. And then finally, the head coach. I am going to go with... Mike McCarthy, this one's kind of tough because I'm going to go Mike McCarthy, then I'm going to go Philly, then I'm going to go whoever New York is, and then whoever Washington is as well. So that is my position group for the New York or the NFC East. Let's go ahead and finish out this video for part two of ranking divisions by position. Anyway, that is, of course, where I'm going to cut it for today's video. If you haven't already, hit that like, subscribe, turn that bell on as we do our best to post on this channel every single day tomorrow. Not really sure what we're going to do. I think we're going to talk EA College Football is what I said earlier in this video. So that's what we're going to do tomorrow's video. Break down the news that we got last night about the game. Talk about it. What I like. What I don't like. Break it all down in tomorrow's video. Friday, you're going to get franchise Friday as usual. And, of course, that is where I'm going to leave it at that one. But, of course, if you guys aren't in the channel, obviously, like, subscribe, turn that bell on. Much appreciated. Thank you all so much for watching. And have a great rest of your day. I will see you all in the next video. Peace.